Maintenance scheduling is hard, especially if you need to automate it with code. Let me show you how to automate and optimize maintenance scheduling in Java using our open source solver Timefold. Use it to build complex maintenance scheduling for airplanes, trains, elevators, industrial machinery, infrastructure, or medical equipment. Let's get started. So here we have a maintenance scheduling problem where we need to do road maintenance. We have four jobs, an uptown street job and a few others. And each of these jobs has, uh, takes a number of working days to complete. So for example, the uptown street job takes three working days. And uh, these jobs have a ready and a due date. So the ready date is the, the earliest moment they can start. And the due date is the last moment they can finish. So in this particular case for the uptown street job, that's ready the 1st of November and due by the 5th of November which basically means it can start the 1st of November or the 2nd of November. We need to assign each of these jobs to a particular starting date, like for example, the 1st of November, 2nd of November. And of course, we need to assign them to a crew like Group A or Group B. Every crew can only do one job at a particular time. And uh, some of the jobs are in the same area. For example, the Uptown Street job and the Uptown uh, Bridge job, they have the same tag, Uptown. So they're in the same area and we would like to avoid having those at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to give a data set like this to Timefold. We're going to uh, take a look at the constraints and add the constraints one by one. And then we're going to get a solution like this, which takes into account all of the hard and soft constraints. So um, let's get started. So what you do is you go to Timefold.ai. Uh, you click on the Quick Starts repo uh, button, which will bring you to our Quick Starts repo. You clone this one, you clone this repository. And uh, if you go down here and you go to the uh, maintenance scheduling link and follow it all the way down to the readme of the maintenance scheduling, uh, you will actually have the full, uh, all of the commands right here. So clone it, go into that directory and run Maven Quarkus dev to run it locally and take a look at how it, it works and start changing it. Um, I've already gone ahead and cloned it locally. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to my ID. And there um, I've gone into the use case maintenance scheduling directory, as you can see over here. And I'm just going to start Maven Quark as dev, which will launch it locally on localhost 8080. Um, let's take a look what's in this uh, project right now. You can see there's uh, the source files in here, right? So we have uh, some the Java files and the two most important things I will focus on right now is the domain and the solver package. In the domain package, we can find the crews and the jobs and things like that. In the solver package, we will be able to find the constraints and I'll go through them in a minute. Now, um, what I'm going to do for now is I'm actually going to disable all of the constraints for a second. And so when we actually switch to the implementation here and we refresh this, uh, what you'll see is that um, if I now solve this and assign all of these jobs, I have about 20 jobs I need to assign, um, then uh, it's going to assign them, but because there are no constraints, it's going to assign everything to the first crew, the alpha crew, and to the first uh, date in our planning window, the 11th of December. Obviously, that's not a good thing because uh, a crew cannot do two jobs at the same time. So let's go back for a second. Let's add in the crew conflict constraints. And I'll take you through that in a minute, how that's implemented. And let's refresh and solve this again. What you will now see is that it actually takes that constraint into account and all of the crews can actually do their jobs. The problem, of course, is if you actually look at it per job, you will see that some of these jobs are actually scheduled outside of their availability. So for example, this particular job here is done before the ready date of the job. It should not start before the 13th of December and obviously, or even the 14th of December, and obviously it does. Also, other jobs are past their due date. For example, this particular job here is should be finished before the 31st of uh, December and it's not on 31st of January even and it's not so um, let's take a look uh, at the code behind this and but before we jump into the code let me explain the model a bit uh, more in detail architecture wise we uh, basically generate we this is a Quarkus application could do this in Spring Boot too we generate some data set we send it to the UI which shows it um, then when we click the solve button, it sends the problem back to our backend, which solves it and sends the solution back to the front end. And of course we solve it with time front. Now, how does the class diagram look like? Okay. So we have our crew, which has a name, for example, crew A, crew B, and so forth. 
we have our jobs, which also have a name, like the uptown street job, the downtown street job, right? And uh, each of these jobs has a ready date and a due date. Uh, as I've spoken about earlier, that's a local date in uh, Java terminology, of course. Um, and of course, it has a duration in days, which does not include the um, the working weekends and days. It will just skip over those. It also has a, a mutually exclusive tag set or just a tag set, which is about the time that uh, we don't want to have two jobs in the same area happening at the same time. And we'll use that to identify it when two jobs are happening in the same area because they have the same tag. Then we also have the start and end date of a job, when the job starts and actually ends. And of course, the crew is signed. Now, ask yourself, what changes during planning? Because that's the most important decision you'll make when starting a Timefold project. And in this particular case, can Timefold for you pick a different name of a job? No, it cannot. Can it pick a different ready date of a job? No, it cannot. The job cannot start before that ready date. And that's set in stone. So what can it change? What can it decide? Well, it can decide for each of these jobs, which crew is going to do the job and also when the job is going to start, the start date of a job. And by choosing the start date, it will automatically also choose the end date, of course, uh, as, a, as a side effect. So the way we actually tell Timeful this is the things you can change is by adding annotations. So we're going to add an annotation on the crew field uh, or, or getter on the uh, of the job um, bean and the uh, job class and that will tell timefold that it can actually fill in the crews and we're going to do the exact same thing for the start date so timefold can pick the right start date for each of these the end date will be automatically calculated by taking the start date and adding the duration in days and i can talk a little bit more about that we're actually going to make that a shadow variable variable because it's a little bit a little, little bit more complex than just taking the start date and adding duration in days because we want to skip over the weekend days right and uh, in a real world implementation, you would also add holidays in there and to be able to skip over those two. So before we give a planning problem to uh, Timefold, uh, all of the start dates and the crew uh, fields will be null and ULL. And when we solve it, Timefold will have filled this in for us. Now we could actually do a warm start where some of these are already filled in. So let's take a look back at the code. So here we have, let's first go to the crew. So our crew, uh, has an ID also. Um, this can be useful in some cases, and uh, the and has a, like I said earlier a name, uh, and that's that's basically the crew object, the crew class. Uh, when we look at our job class, uh, here we have a name. Um, again, we have an ID, but we have a name of like for example, Uptown uh, Street. We have a duration in days, how many days it takes to actually complete this job. We have a ready date and a due date, as I spoke about earlier. I've also introduced an ideal end date here, which is something between the ready and the due date. This is basically, it's like a soft due date. We want this job to be done ideally before the ideal end date, um, but it must be done before the due date. That's the difference between the two. You can already smell this are hard and the soft constraints here, and we'll see that later in our implementation. Uh, the tag set uh, when you know we have two jobs at in the same location, and then of course the stuff we actually want timeful to assign for us, which is the crew. That's why we add a planning variable annotation on top of it. The start date, uh, again, the planning variable annotation on top of it. And then the end date, which, uh, like I said earlier, isn't really a choice that Timefold makes for us. It's really basically a calculation based upon the start date and the uh, duration days. And so for that, we've created a shadow variable. You see there's an implementation here of the shadow variable. Simply what it does is it does that calculation, but I'll not go into that right now, but it's make sure that our domain object uh, is when a timefold changes the start date, that the end date is updated too, so we can make use of that in our constraints, as well as when we send it to the uh, another system like the UI, the end date is filled in properly after solving. Okay, now let's take a look back at our constraints. So we have our uh, crew conflict already active. Let's take a look at how that's implemented. Well, you could implement that with for loops and stuff like that, but that's not efficient because that won't do incremental score calculation. Using our, our, our API, you can actually, our streams API, you can actually get incremental score calculation without doing the hard art of actually writing those deltas to make that efficient. So how does this API look like? Well, in here, what we do is we say, okay, um, I want to basically select a pair, a unique pair of jobs. So give me two jobs which have a different ID, mm. right? And that's, that's what unique pair means. And when they have the equal in there in the crew and this is a lambda so you can actually go into like um you, you can write any code in there right 
But um, when we have two jobs which have the same crew and they're overlapping in time, then we're going to analyze that. Because then we have two jobs for the same crew at the same time, where there's some of them overlap. So how does the overlap, overlapping function work? In the overlapping function, we actually need to give two, um, two properties. We need to say the start and the end. This could be start and end date. This could all be, this may also be start and end time or date times and stuff like that, depending on, of course, your use case. Um, in this case, we're doing a granularity of on dates. Uh, when this happens, we're going to penalize by one hard constraint. So this is a hard constraint. We're going to penalize for the amount of days between uh, in the overlapping part. Uh, we're actually working on making a, a function to to make this easier, but it's the exact same. It basically calculates the number of days that are, are overlapping between the two jobs. Then, uh, if this is the case, then we have a, a crew conflict constraint active. So, um, like I showed that earlier, but let's take a look at what other constraints we're missing. Um, if we were looking, uh, if uh, we were missing the ready and the due date, so let's add these and let's take a look at how those are implemented. So the ready date says if you have a job, and uh, we're going to we're going to filter out all of the jobs. We're going to take all of the jobs, and we're going to filter the ones which have a ready date filled in. And then when the ready date uh, is, so when the start date of the job is actually before the ready date, so when time falls assigns a star, start date to that job that is before the ready date, obviously we don't want that. We're going to break again one hard constraint. We're going to again violate the number of days it is too early. And we're going to say, uh, this is a start date, uh, a ready date constraint that fails. Similarly, the due date works in the exact same way. We look at the job, we uh, take all of the jobs which uh, where the end date is after the due date. And then in that case, we're going to violate, we're going to uh, penalize that again with uh, a hard constraint for the number of days that um, it is uh, overdue. Now, that being said, it might be interesting to know how this works. So basically what Timefall does, it, it, it multiplies this one, the one hard, the, the weight of the constraint with the match weight, uh, which is the number of days in this particular case that's overdue. Um, why do we split that up? That's because in more complex implementations, you want to actually be able to tweak the, the constraints, um, the, the constraint weight without affecting the match weight and also without affecting your unit tests, which brings us to unit testing. If you write a good implementation, you need to write, you need to test it. And you want to test each of your constraints in isolation, right? To test each of your constraints in isolation, we have our constraint provider test here. And let me just scroll down to the uh, due date implementation. So as you can see here, we are we are basically saying that we have a constraint verifier that gets injected. We're basically going saying saying we only want to test this constraint. Do not ignore all of the other constraints. Do not. I just want to, in this unit test test that new date constraint. Also, it will also ignore the constraint weight. As I've said earlier, we are only going to look at the match weight, the number of days uh, that we that were overdue. So when we then have a, a certain job uh, and the Dalton tunnel. And it is actually overdue, right? It's uh, the due date is the second of um, the second day, and it actually ends only on the second day. Then it's already too late, and then we want to verify that it's one day overdue. Or here's another case where we uh, need to end um, by day one, but we are actually at day three. So that's actually three days too late. Then uh, we penalize that by three. And by running this test, we know that the constraint works correctly without actually having to start the solver and without having to eyeball that in the implement in the solution that we see on screen that it works correctly because we know in isolation um, it does what it needs to do. So uh, now that we have those constraints active, let's take a look at how that uh, looks like in our implementation. I'm going to just refresh and we solve it. And now we have the crew constraint active. And we have the, um, the ready and due date constraints active. As you can see, it now has a perfect score. No hard constraints, no soft constraints broken. The crew, uh, all, none of the crews have two jobs at the same time. And uh, we can also see that we actually keep nicely within the ready and the due dates. But as you can see, some of these jobs are now actually happening in, within the red area. So they are done in time before their due date, but they're not done before their ideal end date. So obviously, it's another soft constraint we want to add. You might actually want to add uh, constraints to 
multiple jobs to do them as early as possible, that's front loading, or some of the jobs you want to do as late as possible. For example, let me give you an example. Um, to mow your lawn, you typically want to do that just in time. You don't want to do that too early because then you have to mow your lawn again uh, very quickly again. So that's a job you want to push out. But other jobs like to fix a line, light bulb, that's you want to do that very early because when it's done, it's just over with and it doesn't affect when you have to do it again, or at least I hope not. So um, it might actually you know, differ from case to case where you want to do front loading or just in time scheduling. But whatever the case here, in this case, we're just going to uh, make sure it's before the ideal end date. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go back to our uh, constraint provider, right? And we add the before ideal end date constraint. Uh, well, we add the after ideal end date constraint and the before ideal end date constraint. Let me walk you through those two. So the after ideal end date constraint is quite simple. If we are after the end date, the ideal end date, then we're going to uh, lose a whole bunch of soft constraints, soft points. And actually, as you can see here in a million, we, we value that a lot. We don't want to end up in that red area. So what's the before ideal end date constraint then? Well, that's that just in time. So basically, we, for in this case, we decide that we want to have all jobs done as late as possible. So in this case, we're going to check how much it is before the ideal end date. And if uh, the further it is away, the more we're going to penalize it with a very soft, soft constraint, with a very low weight. So, um, and that will typically be outweighed by uh, this one, of course, the uh, going into the red area. So when we do this now, do another run, we solve it again. You'll see that um, if we, you'll see now we have no longer have a perfect score. Some of the soft constraints are actually broken. It's impossible to uh, do find a schedule which adheres to all of these constraints perfectly, which is fine. Um, and now when we look at it, uh, we see that we actually push all of the all of the jobs as much as possible to the right, except for clearly these two jobs, which we were not we were not able to fill in there. And if you actually look at your per crew, it will be quite obvious a lot of this before their due dates are actually quite filled up, right? Now, one more thing, we had those tags. You can see now we have a job for downtown and a job here for downtown happening at the same time. We didn't want to have that. So let's go back one more and actually activate that last constraint too, the tag conflict constraint, which basically says if you have a unique pair of two jobs happening at the same time and they actually have a tag in common, right? Then we're going to penalize that. Uh, this is then the, how many, uh, this is depending on there are days between them multiplied by the number of tags they have in common. And then we are going to violate a tag conflict. And of course, if we run this again, we will now see that um, all of the jobs are assigned. And if we give it a bit more time to optimize this, and you can see it's doing this right now, we can see the score is already a bit higher because we added more constraints. And let me just stop that because oops, solve is a bit longer, of course. We'll see that. We never have two jobs in the same area at the same time. Here we can, for example, see downtown, never two jobs in downtown at the same time, and even no two jobs in the subway at the same time because a job could have multiple tags. Try it out now. Go to timeful.ai, clone the quick start repository, run it locally, and start tailoring the code to your business needs.